there, and welcome to The Works. I'm Ben Peltier. And I'm Ben Che. This week's show is mostly built around music. Music on ice, music in photographs, and music beyond borders. Music Beyond Borders is the title of a long-running RTHK Radio 4 series that's celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. Later in our show, we'll be bringing you some of the artists featured this time around, including music from the Netherlands, Austria, and Switzerland. We'll also be looking at rock music through the camera lens as we talk to British rock photographer and the founder of Rock Archive, Jill Fernanovsky. But before that, Peter Tchaikovsky's music for the Nutcracker Ballet has long been a part of Christmas. It's performed on stage in Hong Kong almost every year, and this year, the Hong Kong Ballet is preparing a brand new version. While we're waiting for that, though, at the Academy for Performing Arts, there's a chance this week to see the Nutcracker on ice. It was just to show that we do something unique, which is the introduction of the Nutcracker doll. And in most productions, what they'll do is they'll bring out a doll for you. It's like a wooden carving. And I just thought it'd be nice to do something new. So I found a, a very petite gymnast. And she actually represented the Nutcracker doll, which is the present that Drossel Meyer gives to um, his niece. And it just gives a, a different way of showing that character. You know, there's a doll that comes to life that then gets broken. That was the first piece we did. The Nutcracker Ballet is based on a children's tale, The Nutcracker and the Mouse King, written by German author E.T.A. Hoffmann in 1816. Working on a commission from the Imperial Theatre in St. Petersburg, Tchaikovsky was asked to work with choreographer Marius Petipa to compose music for the adaptation in 1892. Today, The Nutcracker is much loved. Its premiere didn't go so well. Audiences liked the music, but didn't much care for the dance. In the 1940s and 1950s, though, American ballet companies began staging it at Christmas. In 1954, the New York City Ballet gave its first annual performance of George Balanchine's version. Since the 1960s, it's become a tradition to stage the performance during Christmas, even in Hong Kong. It's also been turned into animated films and dramatic stage production. The Imperial Ice Stars presented on ice, combining ice skating and acrobatics. We've done our version is based upon Tchaikovsky, the composer's writings, um, which are very, very different um, in lots of subtle ways. So, you know, in ballet, it's quite a dark story. Act One's very dark, and it has a different um, end to it. Not what the composer wanted. You know, the composer wanted this light-hearted, winter's tale of love. The show is performed by a cast of 25 professional skaters, many of whom have previously won international skating competitions. They haven't, however, undergone ballet training, but they say this isn't as important as you might think. We're not doing ballet on ice. We're doing our own inter you know, artistic interpretation. And I think it's wrong if people think that what they're going to come down and see is the ballet. And a lot of people think it's plastic ice, I promise you. It's realized there's 15 tons of it on the stage, all at a, you know, a temperature of minus 8. What they're doing on the stage is quite dangerous. You know, 30, 35 kilometers an hour, they're moving at great speed. Playing the roles of the Arabian prince and princess in Divertissement Coffee, otherwise known as the Arabian Dance, are Fiona Kirk and her fiancé, Vladimir Kodukivsky. For us, it was quite challenging because we are ice skaters. We were trained ice skaters from six, six years old for me, three years old for him. Uh, he used to train in the Ukraine or previously USSR at that time. And I was a skater from Cape Town. South Africa, which, as everyone knows, is not an ice skating nation at all. We're not acrobats as such. We were never trained as acrobats, so we had to use our skating skills to master our performance. Yes, yes. So, speed. Exactly. So we use the speed of the ice, and we use the spin of the ice, and we use our basic skating skills to do the act that we do. We don't rely on acrobatic skills for it, which we, we could never master now at this age. All the skaters that I'm skating with are Russian, Ukrainian, or ex-USSR. So they understand exactly everything about Tchaikovsky, 
ballet. They've grown up with this whole culture. Vladimir was born in Kiev in the Ukraine and previously won many skating competitions. In 1993, he was awarded the Ukrainian Junior Medal. He retired from competition in 1995, became a performer in skating shows and has since toured the world. I grew up in Soviet Union time, and, it's, and I never actually imagined that actually I will actually skate in, in Tchaikovsky music, and especially in theater. I was seriously, it's very good experience for me, new and very good one. I think it's symbolic. The story is beautiful. I mean, you know, it's all about a Christmas present that's given to a young girl, and, and it's her dreams behind her present. And I think also the, the theatrical staging. You know, it's a winter's it's a winter's tale.